what is going on in Pakistan? Who are the key players and what are their objectives? Pakistan is, amongst much else, a nuclear power and therefore definitely worth paying attention to. For people of my generation, Imran Khan, former Prime Minister of Pakistan, but more recently imprisoned on all manner of charges, was a glamorous celebrity leading what seemed to be a gilded life. What happened and what is happening in his homeland? To help me understand is my first guest this evening, Wasik Wasik, research fellow at King's College at War Department. Wasik, thanks for coming in. Bring us up to speed. What is happening? What has happened to Imran Khan? So what uh, seems to have happened is that uh, Imran Khan has um, had some charges being brought against him uh, and uh, he's been found guilty of um, selling or uh, purchasing state assets and uh, has now um, been found guilty as a result of that. And um, what that means is for the next three years, he's going to be imprisoned and for the next five years, he won't be able to stand for parliament uh, uh, through his party, which is the PTI. So this um, seems to have happened over uh, since last year and um, he's obviously uh, been silenced actually in Pakistan th um, because the media haven't been able to report um, on this issue uh, quite recently uh, because the army have um, basically taken control. How, how suspicious ought we to be given that his downfall followed those comments to which I referred you know, where he, he wouldn't join in the chorus of uh, condemning Russia and, and wanted to maintain a neutral stance, and now he's gone. I mean, should we be, should we be a bit sceptical about that trajectory? I think, I think yes, we should be, uh, of course, but it's a concoction of things that have taken place uh, as, as a result. So, yes, that might have been what had broken the, the camel's back, but um, he has been himself um, quite a divisive figure. Uh, in terms of uh, his relation to the West. So he, he doesn't uh, like the West uh, dictating how uh, internal politics in Pakistan should be carried out. Uh, of course, it's a sovereign nation. It's a nuclear power as well. So there are a number of elements that are taking place and that could have been the reason why, um, you know, he's been you, taken you, that far. You see a divisive figure, mm. but I've, I've understood insofar as I can that in Pakistan he is a man of the people and has a great... And when I, when I speak to Pakistani people here in Britain about him, the overwhelming comment I get about him is that he was loved. He was. Uh, in fact, he won the popular vote uh, uh, by 60, 16 million. He got uh, Shabazz Sharif, who's the current interim uh, prime minister, had only got 12 million. So he's clearly a popular figure. He's a popular figure with the diaspora here. And you can see it when um, when he was uh, taken to court. Uh, you know, the whole country erupted. He's uh, got the biggest majority in the Punjab region. So, you know, he is, um, you know, he, he did win and he win, uh, won decisively. But in terms of Western relations, he does seem to be divisive. Laura, I, I have alluded to the thought that he, he was so famous. Mm. You know, he was a David Beckham type character, you know, in the, in the 90s. You know, a very glamorous, a, you know, a, a brilliant sportsman and so on. And, you know, we followed his life in the way that we follow these sporting celebrities. And yet, given that he's had this downfall, he's now in jail, it doesn't feel like we are, fo that our media is following that story with any kind of level of interest. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, when I saw this was a story on your show tonight, I realised I was so behind on the story. And so, obviously, coming on TV to discuss Imran Khan, it looked, um, looked up what's been going on. And I think it's really had quite scant coverage. And in a sense, that is the story. Now, of course, um, he's, he's very popular in Pakistan for multiple reasons. And one is he talks about corruption, corruption mm -hmm. in, um, in the, you know, the two major families. Um, he also casts aspersions, doesn't he, mm -hmm. about the so-called neutrality of the Pakistani army and the involvement of the CIA. And it just makes you suspicious, actually, when there is very little coverage, that there's a bigger story underneath that's suppressing it. Why, why didn't I know more about the Imran Khan story? Partly, I'm probably not reading the international pages enough, but I don't think it is just that. I mean, this is, this is a huge story. You get a sense that the law has been weaponised against him in a similar way to Donald Trump and also in a smaller way to Boris Johnson. And it feels like a real flailing around of the state to mm. prevent the popular candidate from holding power. Wasik, how do you read it? I, you know, am I right? Are we right in thinking that this should be a huge story here? He's one of ours, or he was one of ours for a long mm -hmm. time. 
Yeah, absolutely. It should be a huge story. Uh, it, it doesn't seem to be. And, and we were talking off air and I, and I mentioned that this just seems like it's uh, business as usual. Yeah. And, and the reason why I say this is because since Pakistan's inception over 75 years ago, we've had 29 prime ministers during that period. And not one of them has actually uh, carried out that full five year term. Yeah, so so um, uh, some of them have resigned, some of them have been uh, jailed, w one was assassinated. So there is something um, uh, in the DNA of Pakistan that doesn't allow prime ministers to actually carry out what they need to do uh, in the best interests of their people. And uh, um, why, as a nation, we're not talking about it is, is a really important question. Just uh, to put this into context, when um, Rishi Sunak was asked about this um, at Prime Minister's question, he, he just said, well, this is an internal matter and we're, we're monitoring it. And, and that was about it. What is life like for the people of Pakistan? I mean, in terms of rule of law, you know, it's a it's a it's a democracy. You know, the, how how is life playing out for them? Standard of living and the rest. So the standard of living is quite uh, dire. The inflation is at like 30, uh, over thirty percent. Uh, people are struggling. We've had the floods there. We've um, uh, had a lot of corruption generally uh, in those areas. Um, and people are not, um, you know, uh, getting the standard of living that they that they need. And Pakistan, obviously, are trying their best to to navigate that situation, which is perhaps why they've taken this so-called aggressive neutrality when it came to Russia um, uh, in terms of perhaps oil sales or, or being able to export or import wheat uh, and things like this. So they do have a really difficult task on their hands. Uh, but unfortunately, it is, it is the Pakistani people who are suffering as a result. How are we to read uh, US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken saying now that we look forward to democratic elections in Pakistan? <laughs> uh, why, why wouldn't we have been looking forward to democratic elections in Pakistan had Imran Khan continued to be in place? Wait. That, that, yeah, I, 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 it's really difficult to, to, to say. Um, obviously, the, the optics of it suggest that there's something deeper behind it. Um, only recently, I don't know if you're aware, The Intercept have um, actually published a cipher um, regarding um, US foreign policy in regards to Imran Khan. And what they um, uh, allegedly have said is that um, we need to remove him um, so that we can get Pakistan back up to business as usual uh, with in terms of our, our foreign policy relations. So obviously, as, as the public see this, they do feel like there's something else happening there. It's like, him, it's like he's not, he didn't stick to the script no. to continue the analysis. Have there been riots or will there be? There have been riots, um, but the problem is that the, Brit um, the Pakistani army are suppressing the riots and they've also suppressed the media from actually um, reporting on these riots. So we don't actually get to see this internationally, what's, what's happening. But if you talk to Pakistanis um, on the ground, mm -hmm. they will tell you that we're out rioting, we're out protesting, we, you know, we, we're standing up for our democratic right to have this person uh, represent us. And that's being suppressed by the, the Pakistani army. Also, wouldn't the more politically clever thing to do to have been to let him stay in power and take the fall for the inflation? <laughs> you, you would think so. We're going to have to move on. Wasik, Wasik, thank you so much for your insights. It's a Probably. huge story. And it I'd is. like to keep following it as, as, the, weeks, uh, as the weeks come on.